the thing with your host, Judy Slee, and our special guest, Mitchell Creeman. Welcome to the <laughs> Plays the Thing show. And uh, this beautiful hat was given to me by Mitchell, who's sitting next to me. How are you? Good, how are you? Do you like this hat on me? Yeah, yeah I think that's great with it. What does it say? Wayne Scott Studios. And what does that mean? That's uh, the studio that's right here in the same building as LTV. Yes. Where um, I've uh, built a production facility to produce um, kids shows and movies and everything in the world. You don't say, you producing it. And uh, I was curious, what gave you the idea for the storyline? To do the last show we did, uh, Big Big World. Okay. Um, well, we, I always come up with lots of ideas. I've, ideas are um, kind of what I do best. And uh, so Big Big World is a show that's on PBS now and um, I wanted to do something about the world that made the world a friendlier place for kids to think about. And um, so I came up with the idea of a giant dancing sloth <laughs> and uh, that uh, lives in the world tree and has all these friends. And that sort of, the story takes off from there. It's, uh, so is this a continuous uh, show or is it just one big film? No, no, no. It's 40 episodes that we've done in our first season. Uh, and we shot out here in Wainscott. And it's on PBS now. It's on uh, all around the country, 100 million homes. Uh, we, uh, I think it airs literally like four or five times in, the, in this area alone a day. And then I think uh, across the country it airs as many as 2,000 times a week, you know, when you get all the different now, Did you markets. say it was a series? Yeah, it's a series for kids, preschool series called How It's a Big, Big World. How long is one? Episode. One, one episode. It's like 28 minutes, 30 minutes. I see. It's like a half hour show. Half hour show in the mornings for little kids. And is it continuous? The storyline and stuff? No, no, no. It's a new story each. Uh, in fact, there are two stories every half hour. There are two 11 minute stories mm -hmm. all about Snook and his friends and the environment. Uh, it's very much about. Uh, being stewardship for the environment and taking care of the world and about science. It is marvelous. It's not only that you thought of it, because a lot of people think of things, but you made it happen. Right. That was uh, the hard part. Very talented. How did you make this happen? Would you mind telling us? Well, in the general sense, it's like everything else. If you want to do something, you have, um, it's a long haul. I think it took me, and, and this is not considered a long time, but it took about three years, really, to get the show on air. Uh, which is not really that long when you look at what, how long it takes to get a movie done or a TV show done. So we, I started working on it, um, I guess, in 2002 or so and um, came up with the idea, wrote a proposal. Uh, we developed some drawings for the characters, uh, uh, hired uh, a, uh, people for the educational uh, curriculum. We work with Harvard Project Zero, uh, which is uh, Harvard's uh, educational developmental wing. And then we work with a guy named Dan Anderson who specializes in uh, Amherst develop development uh, issues for kids. And he's worked on shows like Blue's Clues. And I had a show before called uh, Bear in the Big Blue House that was also for little kids that uh, Dan and Tina worked on. And so we began trying to uh, present it to PBS and to different companies to get it funded and you know it took uh, two and a half years to to get it funded and on the air and then we had to produce it and that took about a year. So I heard you say that you had written a proposal. Where did that go? That proposal that I wrote went to PBS initially and all the other people we talked to. And uh, where did you start with, what, with the studio? Building the studio here? I mean, well, where did you start originally? Where was the studio? When I originally started working on the show? On this show or any other show? Oh, any show. Well, I used to live, I lived in the city for 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
and I had studios in the city. I worked at uh, Lifetime Studios and Coffin Astoria and Horvath and Chelsea Piers. You so rented space. I rented space. I see. You know, uh -huh. and but we do such a special thing. If you've seen the show, it's um, this combination of animation and puppetry, and it's a patented process. It requires special equipment. So every time I do any of my shows in this technique, I have to sort of uh, put the studio together myself. It's just four-walled each time. And so this time I thought, well, rather than do this um, over and over again and tear it apart, I want to build a studio that I can uh, keep so going up forever. Here. So that's when I came here, yeah. <coughs> and how long have you been here? Well, I moved here, I guess it's almost four years ago. Um, like a lot of people, I had always, for 30 years, I'd been coming out here and spent like three to six months a year out here. Um, but obviously, moving out here is a different story. And so we moved out here with my three kids um, in, um, I don't know, about three or four years ago, and they, they go to school in Southampton. And, uh, and so once I moved out, I had to find a space to do this in, and, and I was lucky enough to find this building, which is great. It, the LTV people have been incredibly great to me, and the town of East Hampton has been great, the Suffolk County has been great, and it had a huge amount of support in building the place and getting it going, and you know, we're really hoping it's gonna be an industry for people out here. Well, it is very, I think you're very, very talented to <laughs> Thank you. get this from practically nothing to right. the top. I mean, it is amazing. It is. I'm shocked. And, <laughs> and uh, you said something about patent? Yeah, the process that we shoot the show in, this thing it's called Shadowmation, is this patented process combining animation and puppetry that no one had done before. Really? And so I went through so all the rigmarole. I'm an innovator. I'm an inventor, yeah. Inventor. I went through the whole. Oh my gosh. I've actually met my patent examiner in Washington. That was an important moment. Really? You're going <laughs> to be written up in history. <laughs> <laughs> it is just amazing. See, I pegged you from the very first you time did. I've met you from uh -huh. the, uh, you gave a little party here right. last August. Right, exactly to celebrate the opening of your studio. Exactly, yes. And I said, now there is a guy I admire. I'm going to have to know him better. <laughs> and I've been, you know, watching you uh, ever since. And I wanted you to come on my show before. Sure. And they said, no, no, wait, wait, wait till he's finished what he's doing. Right, <laughs> a little crazy, yeah. <laughs> you're very busy. Yeah. So you have finished this project. Right. And now, are you sitting on something new? Lots of new things. Um, we're going to um, hopefully do a second season of the show with some additional characters, so another 25 or 40 episodes of It's a Big, Big World is what we're hoping to start doing in September. And then we have a new show uh, that we're talking to people about that's a music show uh, with some other characters, some new characters. And then I have... And the same storyline? No, completely different. About um, It's called uh, The Beatniks. And they're, it's like um, the monkeys with puppets and characters. And, and who's stuff. writing the music? Well, I write some of the music, and we have a variety of other people. I wrote the theme song on Big Big World and uh, two, uh, three of the, so three of the uh, songs that you hear every week, on uh, every show, on uh, It's Big Big World. But we work with a lot of musicians and a lot of uh, songwriters. And so there's usually about, like Bear in the Big Blue House had about five or six, you know, we like to work with lots of different people for that. So we have that and we're developing feature films uh, to be done in the studio too, using the technique and some live action stuff. And so we're, we're always got like about 10 things feature we're working on. Feature films. <coughs> I was just gonna say that somebody will probably approach you from uh, Dream World or someplace. Right, right. I hope so. <laughs> well, you said you're doing feature films, and what is that? You're going to try to sell it to a to a big company, or you're going to be an independent? Well, we'll see what happens. Um, it's very hard the feature film business. Not there are not very many uh, independent animated feature films. But recently, there was a movie called Hoodwink that did very well. That was made for a little bit of money. And it, it did very well for um, the Weinstein uh, brothers. And 
So mm -hmm. that's raised out mm -hmm. the possibility that a lot of people are interested in doing these lower budget animation films. And what's nice about our process is even though it really looks great, in fact they sell uh, in Costco and Best Buy, they run our show on in the, in the showroom to sell TV sets because it looks so good on their TVs. And Cablevision uses it to tune up their, uh, their sets when they uh, install your HD cable. So the, the process looks really good, but it's also less expensive and takes less time than a regular feature like Pixar or DreamWorks. And so it means that um, you know, there's a possible appeal to doing an animated film that way, and that's what we're trying to do. You are. Nothing short of a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it is just amazing. So where are you from, Mitch? I'm from uh, Virginia originally, Richmond, Virginia. Really? Yeah. If you would have asked me, I would have said Brooklyn. I know. Well, <laughs> you know, when you live in New York for 30 years, you, that's where you're from, no matter where you were from before. So when did you come to New York? I moved to New York in 74, 75, 1975. When you were a baby. I was, a, I was two. I was two years old, but I was still living on my own. <laughs> yeah. And then why did you come to New York? Uh, I wasn't supposed to come to New York. I was supposed to go to San Francisco and meet my girlfriend, but I got... Uh, you got the wrong ticket. No, yeah, I guess I stopped <laughs> in New York and I was fanatic about feature films in those days, so I, was, I just would go to three and four films a day. And, I, and New York City was a good place to see movies in those days. Oh, they didn't have movies in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Virginia. No, but they didn't. No, but it's true. They didn't have, like, the first time I saw uh, an Alfred, no, not an Alfred, but a Greta Garbo film. The first time I saw a Greta Garbo film was in, uh, when I, I lived in Paris and uh, Italy for a year. And that was the first time I ever seen it. And because in Virginia, we got the big feature films. We saw Steve McQueen. We saw Paul Newman. But we didn't, and when I was a kid, they didn't have art films, you know, and there weren't art films down in Virginia, so. So before you came to New York, you went to London and Paris? No, Paris and, and Florence, actually, in Italy. Oh, and uh, you prefer New York to them? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's where I make my living, it was in New York, so, yeah. So you tested those uh, countries? And yeah, I went and traveled. In uh, Italy and and on kind of own? got an education. Yeah, I followed my girlfriend around at the time. You followed your girlfriend? Yeah, I followed her well, wherever what did she, she went. Do over there? She was studying art restoration. Ah, so. And so she was very cool. And and I would. Uh, she lived in Florence, and it was not long after when the flood had uh, hit Florence and destroyed all these books. And she was restoring the books and artwork. In, is uh, she Florence. foreign, your wife? No, she was, well, this is, I didn't marry her. This is just my girlfriend at the time. This is oh, like a hundred years ago. <laughs> um, she was, uh, no, she was, she went to, I went to college with her and she was just a friend. Okay, so, but you did get married finally. I did get married uh, a couple times and I got divorced a couple times. So, you know, I've got oh a bunch of kids. Oh my goodness. <laughs> how many? <laughs> I have three kids. With how many Mac, wives? Jake, and Tess, one with my ex-wife. Mac, Jake, and Tess are my kids. Two They're boys 14, and two boys and a girl. Uh, They're 14, 12, and 9. Oh, how nice. And they, and they live, live out with here. You? Yeah, they live with me and with my uh, ex-wife. We're all very friendly. Oh. She moved out here too. Yes. And, um, and so you're not married? No, not married. Oh my goodness, you're going to have so many phone calls. Oh, good. I need them. <laughs> Proposals. That's good. Okay, I hope so. <laughs> Too bad I'm not your age. <laughs> <laughs> well. So oh, that's. Yeah, so I have three kids, and they're all, they all live out here. And, and uh, go to school out here? Yep, go to Southampton so Public School. So, how do you think about the Hamptons as far as uh, art, like drama and plays and all Well, I think it's really, things. it's great because it's, um, it's a mixture of uh, rural and urban together, you know. So it's like you've got the benefit of being in an environment that's not as dense as New York City, but at the same time, there's enormous sophistication out here. And Guild Hall, I'm a member of Guild Hall, and the parish. You are. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. The parish, Guild Hall, Bay Street. You're a member of Bay Street? Yeah. All those places are just terrific. And uh, places. does it mean that you, you go to see their productions? Yes, I do. And I take yeah. my kids to see them, and, and I know those guys. I know everybody at all those organizations. They're all great people. I mean, they are. you've got, 
you know, Emma and Steve at uh, Bay Street, and Josh and Ruth over at uh, Guild Hall. <laughs> Ruth was on my show twice, and she's coming in two more weeks. The third time she's going to oh, be Oh, great. Yeah. She must love it. She does. <laughs> she, she talks about, you know, what she's doing, and then we show that all over. She, right. She wants to And we had our puppeteers perform at uh, the parish last year. You could bring them here on my show. Yeah, well, when they're back, we'll rope them in. Yes, but, and I'd love to have, uh, but I had a lot of uh, performers, people, I mean, local, mostly local. Right. And uh, it's, uh, this show has been going on for over a year. Wow. I couldn't even tell you all the people who were here. Sure. And I'm still looking for new people, and I'm looking for a repeat. Right. And, uh, well, uh, Guildhall and Ruth is my biggest fans. <laughs> and they send a lot of people on this show yeah. when something goes on there. Josh, you ought to get Josh on. Josh is a great he guy. He was my first. Oh, he was. There you go. <laughs> he was my first. And then his wife, Kate, was yeah, on Yeah, Kate's also. great, too, yeah. And when, when she came, she had injured her arm or oh. something, so she couldn't perform. They're but, all uh, great, great people, and it's and great to have so many people out here. Ogie. <laughs> I don't know, Ogie. That's a little boy. Oh, okay. The future. Uh, oh, he's so adorable. <laughs> he was on... Uh, they put him in a couple of shows there. Oh, great. Yes. And, uh, but I was going to ask you about, uh, is that, did you ever think about going on stage? I used to be a performance artist. My specialty... My goodness, is there anything you didn't do? <laughs> no, there is not much. <laughs> I even rang the bell for the Salvation Army one uh, Christmas. <laughs> um, and I used to teach driver's ed. That's another weird job I had. Anyway, we won't go into those, but uh, I used to perform um, in the days in Soho. I lived in Soho into the performance art community when there was Eric Bogosian and Laurie Anderson, all these people. And my specialty I was that I performed in the dark. And I did something called an evening of stories and tricks you won't see anywhere. And, and you never saw me. No one could see me at all. <laughs> oh, that and, is. And uh, my goal was to perform without anybody seeing me which I succeeded at. And I got some good reviews. I liked it a lot. I would be doing it still if, uh, if I could have made a living at it. But, you mean um, there is a show where in the dark, did that, was anybody else visible? Nobody was visible at all. No. It was just me in the dark. It was about, the, the idea was that I came out to do this performance, but the lights didn't come on. And then the lights never went on. So nobody had, what is it, just a, a blank? Uh, it was a dance theater workshop. And there was, I brought out a bunch of props and the lights were supposed to go on and they never came on. You and couldn't then, even see the props? You couldn't see anything. I made sure that you couldn't see anything. That was my goal. And, and then what, it was like a joke. And uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, so then I'd come out and uh, wait for the lights to come on. They wouldn't come on. This was performance art, you have to remember. And then when the, the lights wouldn't come on, I'd apologize. And basically, I apologized for 45 minutes. I'm very good at apologizing. <laughs> and I would talk about um, what I was going to do. It's, a, it's really basically an odd. How old, long did it last? 45 minutes. It was a, it was like, it's like an old vaudeville routine. My grandfather was in vaudeville. And he used to tell me about these performances that were very much like performance art, but they were vaudeville. So I would come out and basically say, and there was a, there was a comedian that did a routine like this where um, I'd come out and say, look, I'm really sorry the lights didn't come on. You know, I don't know why this is. I, you know, I had all these great things planned. And then little by little, while I'd talk about it, I'd say, like, I was going to do this, I was going to do this, I was going to do that. And little by little, I would do it all. Of course, in the dark, so you couldn't see it. And people but, were on, the, on pins and needles. When is the light going, going on? on? Right, exactly. Some people <laughs> didn't like it, the lights not coming on. Some people thought it was very funny. Now, I got good I reviews. Think it's funny, but uh, I don't know if I would want to sit through. <laughs> in the dark, right. Well, for 45, I could be I funny. I know. That's why I'm not doing minutes. it now. <laughs> for 10 minutes, maybe. It was a good idea then. I was younger. It is. Yeah. So that's all that you could put on your credit for as an actor? As, well, I actually was at Saturday Night Live, too. I, um, well, excuse me? I was at Saturday Night Live. I was a writer. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. As a writer? I was a writer, performer, and filmmaker. Performer? What? Tell me about your performance. I only was on twice, I think. Was Doing I on more what? than twice? I was on once in a sketch, and I was on twice in a video that I did for the show. What? What? 
Did I do? do? I think I just sat there in the sketch. I don't think I did anything. I didn't you have a big... Did you get an Oscar? No, I didn't get an Oscar for that. For sitting. Or an Emmy. The, in the I mean, video... there's different ways of sitting, you know. <laughs> right, I know, that's true. I mean... <laughs> in the video, the two videos I did, the little films, short films I did for Saturday Night Live, I did... What did I do? One of them, I was... Uh, I was in bed in both of those. I wasn't sitting, I was in bed. And in one Were of them... Were you asleep? <laughs> no, I was complaining about my girlfriend in, in one of them, in yeah. bed, about how she wasn't the same anymore, she had changed. And every time you cut uh, to her and her response, it'd be a different woman. <laughs> so she had really changed a lot. But, but she oh, acted like she was the same, so it was very bizarre, very surreal. And the and other you one. Written that. Yeah, I wrote and produced I and directed could, um, and performed. Sort of it. getting the gist of your humor. My problems, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then another one was complaining that there was somebody hiding in my apartment. Uh-oh. And meanwhile, every time you'd cut back to me, you'd see there was a woman there who obviously was my girlfriend, and she would be looking at me like I was crazy. So that was another piece I did. And then the third piece I did was with the performer Bill Irwin, who you've probably heard of. The, he's a physical comedian and actor that's on Broadway. He actually has done some serious acting in um, Who's Afraid of G Virginia Woolf recently. But he did a routine about a guy who couldn't stop dancing. <laughs> so I did a short film with him where he couldn't stop dancing. So what happened? Does he collapse at the end? No, he dances away into the sunset. In <laughs> sunset. Right. So and what was your part in it? I wrote, directed, produced it, you know. When well, you were not in it. That one I wasn't in. The others you, I was you in. You sort of put yourself in it to, to teach him how to dance. I think he knew how to dance better than me. <laughs> No, I'm just saying that so you could be in it. Well, you know, I have written a couple of plays, and maybe you would, I, I did a couple of readings uh, uh -huh. at Guild Hall. Cool. Maybe you'd like to do a reading one day. I'd love to see that, yeah. I mean, you performing it as a, as a, oh, okay. reader, well, that's, a part in it. That's what I mean. I don't know. That's a <laughs> risk you want to take. <laughs> well, th th there's a... It'd have to be dark, though. It'd have to be. The lights would have no, to be out. No, no, I'm not ashamed of what I've written. <laughs> and you have a great delivery. You have a nice speaking voice. Oh, thank you. Well, I'd be glad to try that. Uh, I think I found a, a theater company who was very interested in doing a reading uh -huh. of it. So cool. So I will tell you about it. Okay. Then I will pencil you in. All right. I'll be penciled in. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll become a famous singer. Yeah, it could happen. Maybe you'll be able to appear in your next production. Yeah. And uh, you could, you have animation and drawings. I, you know, I used to, I did a show, I used to appear a little bit more. I did a show for Comedy Central, Comedy Channel. Yes. When it first started, and there was this uh, actress named Rachel Sweet, who was very funny and very good, and I, um, produced her show, and little by little we worked me into the show, so I would appear and I'd, she'd mm -hmm. yell at me and complain, and I'd have to try to help her. And so with the present thing that you're doing, you said it was animation and... Uh, puppets. Puppets. So, no about people. a live person. No, no you, people, yeah. You could be like in the middle of the one mm -hmm. some book, you had it, hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not yet, we'll see. Not so uh, far. There's a lot of humor in what you do, and you have a very uh, fascinating personality, a lot of ideas, but not only is a, the idea, as I said, but you're making it happen. Which right. most, I mean, so many people have ideas. I have hundreds of ideas, but I just don't know what to do with them. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> and you, here you are, you persevered. That's yeah, the, persistence. That is the, the key to everything. Don't be of not to being afraid somebody says no, and not being afraid somebody says it's no good. Right. Because that happens all the time. <laughs> they mostly say it's no yeah, good. No good. They it's say no more good. it's no good than that it's good. Yes. So uh, that's what I say when people tell me no, it's no good. I say, well, you just don't know what's good. Right. <laughs> no, that's true. And uh, I just go on and on and uh, so. And, and this show that I'm doing, it is not something I dreamed of, and it's not something was my goal in life. Uh -huh. I just was always interested in theater and right. film and everything, and I just took a course here. Right. And they said, when it was finished, I said, okay, now you're a producer. There I you said, go. I said, really? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you couldn't have your own show. I said, really? How do I do that? Right. And that's how it happened. And you did it. And it just caught on. Right. 
I just keep doing it. And look, I'm a star. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and uh, we air here at the at this the East End uh, three four times a week. Oh, great! I started with two, and then they put three and four. And I dub the show, and I take it to Riverhead, and they air me three times a week. Oh, that's good. And Manhattan, they only want to do it once. But they do air in Manhattan, so that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, they don't want to give me more than one because they have a lot of other things. Yeah, going. things, right. So, pretty soon, it'll be all over the world. Maybe. That'd be great. They're going to be clamoring for this show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy that I finally. Uh, got you here, and I heard all about you, how you do it, and it is just, uh, you kept on it. They kept on it. You wouldn't let anything deter you. Which right. Is, I give you credit for thank that. Thank you very much. And thank you for Evan, Lee, and LTV Studios for uh, helping me do this show. And all my underwriters, uh, Gurneys, Paul Brennan, and Windmill One. And uh, I say goodbye to pe oh, people. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Come and see us next time. I have a lot of Bye. good guests. And just keep looking for the play is the thing. Okay. The play is the thing. And the song that's, I don't hear the song. Is it on? Why? They forgot. They forgot to do it.